Hello and welcome to chapter 5 of JavaScript from Null. I'm sorry for the longer than anticipated delay, but we'll get right back into it. We're going to look into events. So responding to when a user performs some kind of action on the page. That's referred to as an event. For example, if you were to click on a div or if you were to click on an anchor tag, that would be an event, the click event. If you were to hover over a div, that would be a hover event. Okay, so let's take a look. You're going to learn, especially with JavaScript, there are some issues from browser to browser that are, are frankly a pain to work with, and that's the, uh, the joy of working with something like a JavaScript library because they abstract all of those, uh, those issues away so you don't have to worry about them. But you're learning JavaScript. It's important to know how to use it effectively, not just how to use a, a library. Okay, you need to learn the actual language. Okay. So, uh, let's go into TextMate, and we're going to start with a blank slate, and we're going to call this index.html, per usual. And let's just go ahead and add an anchor tag, and we'll give it a, um, an ID of anchor if we need to access it, and we're going to write click me. Okay. Save that, and let's go ahead and view this in the browser. There we go. So if I click me, you're going to see at the very top, the default action of a anchor tag is just to direct you somewhere. In this case, we have the pound symbol, so it's just directing us there. So the first thing that we want to do here is add an event listener that will listen for when that anchor tag is clicked on. If you have ever used a JavaScript library, you'll probably see something like a click. Okay, and that'll find all anchor tags on the page and add a click event to them. In this case, we want to only add it to a single anchor tag. So first we'll create a variable. Let's of course, start in script tags. And we're going to say var, and we'll just give it a name of anchor, that's fine. And it's going to be document, and then we learned this before, get element by ID. And here we're going to get the anchor tag. Now, if we did not have that, we could also do get elements by tag name. And this way, we would pass in the name of the tag, and this would return all elements on the page that match that one, and then you could simply filter through them, and if you only wanted the first one, do something like that. But here, using an ID will work just fine. So now, anchor stores a reference to this specific anchor tag. Okay, so there is the level one event handlers and level two. A level one is really older, and we're not going to focus that on that too much because it's it's really almost completely gone with the more modern browsers. But uh, we will go over it slightly. So first, let's learn how to work with modern browsers and how to add a simple event handler. So all we want to do here is listen for when that anchor tag is clicked on, and when it is, we're going to call a function. That function we're going to call is going to be do something. Okay simple and when it when that occurs uh, why don't we just do something like um, alert clicked okay so now let's come back here and we're gonna say anchor dot add event listener now this isn't gonna work in Internet Explorer but it is going to work in Firefox Safari Chrome etc and it's going to accept a few parameters. The first one it wants to know is what kind of event are we listening for? We're going to listen for the click event. The next thing it wants to know is what do you want to do when, uh, what function or action are we going to perform when that's done? We're going to call the do something function. Notice here we're not wrapping in parentheses because we aren't executing the function right there. We're simply making a reference to it. So when it's clicked, then we call this function. Okay, and then the third parameter is uh, it, it refers to whether or not the element should be captured or not, and this is a bit of a higher level, so I'm not going to go over it too much just yet, but uh, setting it to false for now will be good enough, and then before the end of the video, I'll kind of go into more detail about what capturing and bubbling actually is. Okay, so when it's clicked, we're going to call do something, and it's going to alert clicked. All right, let's see how that works. Refresh the page. And I'm going to click on, let's go ahead and get rid of that anchor tag. And I'm going to click on it. And we get clicked. Good. But you can see there, it still performs the default action of the anchor tag. Whoops. 
and this is where we can uh, we can work with the actual event so when this function is called it's actually going to also come with a parameter called e it can be anything you want we can call it evt or event and let's just see if we were to console.log this using firebug i'm going to refresh this page here and i'm going to click on it again and let's open up firebug and see what was logged and you can see here it these parameters were passed uh, so you can see the target the type here at the target so if we were to do e.target you can see it would refer to the element that was clicked on right and in this case it was the anchor tag with an ID of anchor uh, let's see what else we can view what type of um, what type of event it was and it was the click event so you have a lot of uh, parameters available to you now it's important to remember that not all of these are going to work from browser to browser for example target works in firefox so you could do eat up target but in internet explorer of course they have to have their own versions and in that case it would be event dot source element and they essentially do the exact same thing but you access them differently uh, going further with that, with Firefox and other modern browsers, you can add an event using add event listener. With Internet Explorer, you use attach event. So it's a pain, but you'll eventually uh, abstract these out to your own utility functions, and then you really don't have to worry about it too much. Okay? So uh, we've saved this. I'm going to go ahead and close out. This is Firebug. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And let's see how this works. We've confirmed it does work in Firefox. I promise you it's going to work in the other ones. But now let's check out uh, Internet Explorer. So I'm going to work, open up a virtual computer here. And just make that a little bit smaller. And let's open up Internet Explorer. And we have our index.html page right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that in. And we have our click me element. So I'm going to click me. And if you look at the very bottom, you're going to see done, but with errors on the page. So why would there be an error? And it's because, as I mentioned previously, Internet Explorer has no idea what Add Event Listener is. So if I double-click on it, you're going to see object does not support this property or method. And it has no idea what Add Event Listener is, so it throws an error. Okay, so what we need to do now is uh, listen for it. So we're going to say if window that attach event. Remember I told you this is Internet Explorer's version of adding event listeners. So all we want to do right now is check if if the JavaScript knows what that is. If the browser understands what attach event is. If it does, it means it's Internet Explorer. If it doesn't, it's a different browser, right? So we're going to do if window.attach event, then we're going to use Internet Explorer's model, which is anchor.attach event. And it's going to be click, but once again, IE is a little bit different. You need to append on, so it would be on click for IE. And once again, we're going to do something. And Internet Explorer does not uh, allow for capturing, so we only have two parameters there. And once again, I'm going to go over capturing a little bit more later. Okay. And now, else, we're just going to assume uh, that it's going to be a modern browser. There is another version, which is just element.onclick, but that's the level one, and it's really old, and you don't necessarily need it. So we'll keep it simple here, and we're going to do anchor.addEvent, listener, click, do something. I could have just pasted this again, and that's fine. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So now we have compensated for IE and other browsers. So let's come back here and refresh the page and make sure it's working correctly. Okay, I'm going to click me and nothing is working. So let's see what the problem is. Let's go back to the console and refresh this one more time. Click me and nothing is happening. And then let's just do this right here. We're just going to once again alert clicked. Okay, and let's come back and get rid of the hash and click me and now we get that so it is working in Firefox let's now go back to our virtual machine and go into IE and see if that works refresh the page and I'm gonna click click me and now it is working because it understands attach event and it never even comes across at event listener okay cool 
So good, we've confirmed it does work in Internet Explorer and that will work in 7 and 6 as well. But doesn't this seem a little inefficient when every time you want to add some kind of event handler, you have to do all of this code? Isn't that a pain? And then you also have the problem with if we want to alert the target of the element. If you remember earlier, we determined that was the element that was clicked. Uh, we could do e.target, and let's just see an example. Refresh the page. I'm going to click me and open up console, and you can see that is the target, correct? And why don't we just change this to an alert since we're also going to go into IE as well. So if we go back to IE and, I'm sorry, let me reopen that. Drag that in, and I click it. We're going to get an alert that says undefined. And once again, uh, the event object, we have different properties available to us depending on whether we're in Firefox or Internet Explorer. So what we have to do now is rewrite E, and we're going to say var e, and if you remember earlier in a previous lesson we learned about ternary operators, we're going to do e, and we're going to say if, I'm sorry, we're going to do var target, and we're going to say if e target exists, then we're going to set it to e target. Else, we're going to set it to window event source element, which is the way Internet Explorer will access it. And now if we do alert target, let's see what we get. Refresh the page, click me, and we still get that. Let's go into IE, refresh the page, and I'm going to click click me, and now we get that. So the best possible thing we can do here now is create a utility function that will allow us to abstract away some of these uh, this functionality. So let's create our first utility function, and we're going to call it function and we're going to call it add event. Now, this function is going to accept some parameters. Let's see what we need to feed it. Well, we first need to feed it uh, what element we're going to be working on. We'll call that obj for the, we could do ele for element or object, anything's fine. And that would just refer to uh, the anchor in this case. So let's experiment how we want to call this. We're going to do add event, and we want to be able to say add an event to the anchor element up here and the event type is going to be click and uh, if we want to do a third one we want to know what kind of function we want to do so we can either do an anonymous function where we just add in a function right there or we can once again add a reference to a function like do something now if we also want to do something we can add an option for Firefox uh, which is the capturing thing so we could do capture as well that's how we're going to call it so let's go ahead and create that. So we're going to accept the object, the event type, the function to run, and then capture. All right. So let's just bring this information in. So we're going to say, uh, let's just get all of that, cut it out, bring it in. And now we're going to say, if obj.attachEvent, then obj.attachEvent. But we can't just hard code on click here because we want the function to be reusable. So we want to make sure that uh, we do on plus the event type. Because remember, we don't want to expect the user to do on click. They're just going to do a click. And if it's Internet Explorer 6, we'll remember to go ahead and add on before it because it requires, I'm sorry, did I say Internet Explorer 6? All IE will require on and then followed by the event type. So this would render on click. And then do something. No, we don't want to hard code that in. We want to call the function. Uh, IE doesn't understand what the capture is, so we're going to leave that off. And else, we're going to do object.addEventListener. Click. No, nope, get rid of that. It's going to be the event, followed by the function, followed by capture. But we want to make capture optional. optional. So why don't we say, if not capture, meaning if capture does not exist, meaning the user didn't even pass that option in, they just left it off, like false or true, we want to just go ahead and set it. So if capture does not exist, capture will default to false. All right. And now listener event function capture. So let's say in this example right here, what's going to happen? 
let's say the user is using the Firefox browser, it's going to say if object attach event, Firefox doesn't know what that is, so it's just going to run the second part. And we're going to say if capture does not exist, well let's come down here. Nope, they never passed that in. So we're going to go ahead and set that value to false. And then we're going to say object. Okay, so we're going to say anchor dot add event listener. And the event that we are listening for is click. The function to run when it is clicked is do something. And capture is false. Okay, and we have do something right here. So once again, we're just going to alert. Clicked. Um, okay, so let's go back to Firefox, refresh the page. Let's try that again. Refresh and bring this out just a little bit. Click me. And there we go. We get clicked. So that was abstracted away. So what is the advantage to this? Well, let's imagine now that we have a new box. And we'll say div id equals box. And let's just give it some quick styling width 200 pixels, height of 200 and a background of red, that's fine. And now we want to say var box equals document .get element by id box. And now we're going to add an event that listens for when that box is clicked. And when it is, we're once again going to do, do something. And now we can easily add events to different elements. So click it, and now we get clicked just the same. And we didn't have to go ahead and write all of this code once again. We can abstract that way away to maybe a functions file. And you don't really have to worry about it anymore. So that's the extent of what we're going to go over in this first lesson. Uh, it gets more complicated with event bubbling. Uh, we should go over event bubbling r really quick before uh, we leave this. Let's imagine that you have a, uh, a list item. And then within each list item, you have an anchor tag. Have you ever thought about, what if we fired an event listener on the anchor tag? Well, doesn't it make sense that when you click on that anchor tag, you're also clicking on a list item, and you're also clicking on the unordered list, and you're also clicking on the body element. So this is what is referred to as bubbling, because the event will bubble all the way up. It'll listen for the anchor tag, and then it'll bubble up for list item and see if there's a listener on that, and then it'll bubble up further to the UL, and then further up to the parent, and then further up to the body tag. Now, in modern browsers like Firefox, it actually has a capturing phase where it goes down. So in the capturing phase, it begins at the body, and then goes down to the parent, then to the UL, then to the LI, and then to the anchor tag, and then it finds the click event, and then it bubbles back up. Now, if you remember, I said Internet Explorer doesn't implement this capturing phase, which is why we don't allow for that option with the attach event, but it does work in other modern browsers. So that's really just a broad overview, and we're going to go into that much more, but that's as much as I want to do for this, uh, this intro of Chapter 5. So let me know if you have any questions, and we'll be back soon with Chapter 6. Thanks. Bye.